there's not sufficient evidence at this stage to limit sodium intake. So when we say salt, we normally talk about sodium chloride and the sodium is what people get concerned about. Just for an example, in I think it was September of 2017, um, the Australian Dietary Guidelines removed any upper limit for sodium intake for individuals. That means that I can now tell you to have as much salt as you would like and not be in contravention of the Australian Dietary Guidelines. Trouble is the, the fluid volume of your blood is governed by how much sodium you have. And if you don't have enough sodium in your blood vessels, then number one, you'll often feel thirsty because your body's saying, we need more fluid, we don't have enough fluid, so you'll, you'll drink a lot. But then because you don't have the sodium, remember the sodium's necessary to hold the fluid inside your blood vessels. So you'll end up urinating it out. So people on ketogenic diets, um, because you often need more salt on ketogenic diets, if, if they're finding that they're constantly thirsty and they're urinating a lot, so when they drink, it just passes out, it's often a sodium deficiency. And one of the other major symptoms people will feel is that if they stand up quickly, they'll feel dizzy because their blood pressure isn't enough to maintain the blood pressure going up to the brain. You're basically starving the brain of oxygen of, of its blood supply. So they're two common symptoms of sodium deficiency, um, easily fixed just by having more sodium in the diet. Well, fructose directly contributes to insulin resistance. So we've got some beautiful studies where they've actually had groups of children who have been consuming a lot of sugar, which is 50% fructose, 50% glucose and they've taken out the fructose, but they've basically replaced it with same amounts of glucose. So the total carbohydrates have stayed the same, but the fructose has reduced. And in those studies, even very short periods in the space of you know just over a week, they've been able to demonstrate significant reductions in liver fat and have no doubt. liver fat is uh, fatty liver is a direct con uh, cause of insulin resistance now if you have insulin resistance we said before that means the insulin's not working properly so then your body will increase the level of insulin now the thing about insulin not working properly is it's very tissue specific so while it might not work as, as it normally does in your muscle tissue, helping your muscles to take sugar out of circulation, it can still work relatively well at the fat level. So help your fat stores take sugar out and it can still work quite well at the kidney level. And one of the jobs of uh, insulin at the kidney level is to actually hold on to sodium. So that's actually a a much more important factor for increasing the sodium in your body and causing high blood pressure than is the amount of sodium that you consume. If you consume a, a modicum of sodium but have very high insulin levels, your body's gonna try very hard to hold on to all of that sodium. You can, on the other hand, consume a whole lot of sodium but have very good low insulin levels and any excess sodium that can, you consume will just come out in your urine. High insulin levels prevent that from happening effectively. So 